Tanner, Jack Tanner, Jack Tanner, Tanner, Jack Tanner, Jack Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to invent the time machine. Or uh, something close to that at least. This is a clock that can move forward and backwards really fast with a modified circuit. So let's get started. Now the first thing you're going to need is an old clock. I pulled this clock out of an old decoration and it has all the required parts to make it work for this project. You can use almost any small clock that is mechanical and not digital. You'll also need a few materials for this project, such as a 555 timer and socket, a 1 microfarad capacitor, a 100k ohm potentiometer, and two 100 ohm resistors. You will also need some wire and some solderable perf board. Now, the first step is to take apart your clock. So what I did is I just removed this black plastic cover, and then I was able to remove all of the gears and the copper coil. This coil is what we're going to be basing our project around. After this, you can set aside the clock and gears and focus just on the coil circuit board. We're going to be making our own circuit board to wire this copper coil to that will make our clock run a lot faster. In order to know how to build a new circuit board for this clock, we will first need to know how this old circuit board works. Now, this little gear right here has a ring magnet inside, which is divided into two halves. One half is positive and one half is negative. Now, this copper coil has a piece of metal that goes through it. Now, what happens is when current flows through the coil in one direction, one side is made the north and one side is made the south. So the gear rotates, so that way the opposite polarities align. But then, when the coil reverses current, then the polarities change, and the gear rotates one half revolution. This is the same principle that most stepper motors work. Now for our experiment, we're going to want to make this gear turn a lot more times per second than just one. So we need to build a circuit. The best device to use for the circuit is the humble 555 timer. Now, how my circuit works is here you have the clock coil and it is connected to two 100 ohm resistors, one going to positive and one going to ground. And we have a 555 timer here that acts as our oscillator. So what happens is based on this resistor and capacitor value, this pin three puts out a different signal frequency on its pin. So what happens is when this pin 3 is at positive, the current flows through the 555 timer, through the coil, through this resistor into ground. Now when this pin 3 is at ground potential, the power flows through this 100 ohm resistor, through the coil, and to ground. So that way, current is always flowing in two directions through this coil which allows it to work as the clock has intended it. So let's build this circuit. You'll need to start by scratching away the two traces that go to the two copper coils because we don't want this circuit to be interfering with our circuit. So you can just use a small screwdriver and just scratch right here. You can then solder two wires to the two pieces on the bottom of the circuit board that connect to the copper coil. These will be used to connect the copper coil to our circuit because the circuit board acts as a kind of mount for the copper coil to be inside the clock. Now you can start building your board. Now the best way to do this is just to arrange all the components in the most logical manner and then solder them. Okay so now after your circuit board has been finished and soldered it's time to put everything back inside the clock to see if it works. I will start by inserting the coil with its metal rod inside it. You try to stick the coil in, and then you slide the metal rod in place, and then you secure the coil in place. Now, as you can see, when I connect the circuit board to the clock, the small little gear is spinning. That means that it's working. As you can see, I can adjust the speed using this potentiometer. 
Now that we know that this works, it's time to put all the rest of the gears in place. This is relatively easy. Now that everything's put back in place, and the clock is turned on, you can see that it's pretty cool. It's turning in a circle, and this is in real time. This is actually quite a cool effect, because this clock is going in one minute segments in just about two seconds. So this is pretty cool. This is indeed a time machine. You can also, with the um, right adjustment of the potentiometer, make the clock actually go backwards. <laughs> now this is pretty cool because it looks like time is actually going backwards. And just to prove that this is real time, this is the clock ticking backwards, and this is me talking in normal time. This is an iPad timer running in normal time, while this clock runs in reverse time. So let's see some uh, videos where we can uh, see the result of this cool effect. I've done it. I've invented the time machine. Let's test it out. So I'll turn it on and... So, as always, thank you for watching, and make sure to stay tuned for next time, when I will be showing you how to build a circuit that'll let you take one of these xenon flash tubes and let them light up brightly to illuminate a whole room.